Every year, over 100 million people go through passport control to get into Britain. Most are welcome and legal, many are not. For the first time on television, we go behind the scenes of the UK Border Agency, the men and women on the front line of immigration. Tonight, lorries carrying more than freight. Hello, guys. Eight, nine, 16. 16. Cracking down on illegal workers in London. I'm going to have to arrest you for in the UK illegally. Refusing entry at Heathrow. Legally, we have to send you back on the first available flight. They will kill, kill me with the Indian government. They will kill both of us. How long will you all be staying for? There you go, mate. Thank you. Most have a legitimate reason to enter Britain. Thank you, Madam Hubbard. Many are simply coming home. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And how are you today? Good. Could you just lift your hat from? I know what, what you look like. I just want to see That's you. That's what I look like. <laughs> you like it? I do indeed. Oh, thank you very much. I like the way you look. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you go, sir. It's the job of the officers on the passport desk to spot those trying to get in illegally. Immigration officer Lisa Lee has been checking passports at Heathrow for the past two years. She's developed an eye for things which don't add up. So when you came in January, how long did you stay? Uh, two, two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. No, you didn't. You stayed longer than two weeks, sir. You were here two months. How come you're spending so much time here? You spend more time here than you do in Pakistan. Why? Uh, no, I do working in the, the business only purpose. All right, so I need you to take this piece of paper, please. I need to make some inquiries, OK? You need to take a seat over there. Officer Lee suspects the passenger has been using visit visas to stay longer in Britain than he claims. Now she wants to dig a little deeper. He says he's a business owner in Pakistan, running a fruit and vegetable business, export business. But I don't see how he can be doing that when he's spending most of the time in the UK. So I'm just going to work out how much time he's actually been spending here since he got his first visa. August, oh, six weeks he was home. I conclude from my investigations that this gentleman's living here. He's out of 30 months, he's spent 26 and a half months here. Of course, we don't know what he's actually doing while he's here, which is what we're going to attempt to find out. Okay, sir. You come with me, please? Yeah. How many bags do you have with you? Just this one and one other? Immigration officers have the powers to search luggage for evidence. You said you didn't have any documents. What's this? Okay, this is a notice from Company's House saying your accounts are due for your company. You're supposed to be a visitor in the UK. Why are you running a company here? Why have you got this? It's your company? Yeah, it is, because it's registered here. Why would they have a detail of your company? Okay. All right, so bags on the trolley, please. We're going to go back upstairs. Upstairs is where the formal interview rooms are. Officer Lee is now going on record, and her visitor has asked for the help of an interpreter. When you are here, are you spending all your time marketing your business? Because I'm not satisfied that you're just visiting the UK. You haven't given me sufficient information and I don't understand some of your answers. You're not giving me explanations as to why you need to follow up here. The basis of what he's saying is that he's been here pretty much solidly since October 2005 to market his fruit and veg business that he runs in Pakistan. He's not had any orders from anyone in the UK for that whole time. And yet, when asked why he's sending money back to Pakistan, he says it's for packaging and boxes, even though 
he's not actually sold anything to package or box. He must be doing something to earn money. I'm well, not I'm satisfied into... about what you've been doing for 26 months because you can't explain. So how can I be satisfied of what you're going to do this time? There's a high likelihood that he's been told to stick to a simple story. We, we see it quite often. It's, a, it's an unbelievable story, and yet, if you stick to it, what can we do? And it's very probable that he's heard through the grapevine. Don't tell him anything, just keep quiet. Don't try and include too many people in it, and if they can't prove anything, then you might be all right. Officer Lee has heard and seen enough. For the final decision, she will consult her boss, the chief immigration officer. His sole purpose in coming to the UK is to be a market, to market his business in the UK, not as a visitor. Well, if that's what he's actually doing. If that's what he's doing, but we we haven't got evidence otherwise. We don't have any pay slips or anything like that, or any O&I numbers or anything like that to say he's working. I think he clearly falls to be refused. I think we'll cancel it on the basis of it. Okay, do a change of circumstances then, yeah. Everyone should give him the right of appeal before removal if he chooses to exercise it, and that's fine. Okay, the passenger is being refused entry and he will go back to Pakistan. The earliest flight is tomorrow morning, so he's going to remain in our holding room overnight because unfortunately it's too late now to get him a bed for the night and get him back here in time for the flight, which is at 5 to 8 in the morning. OK, sir, this is your, the reason why you've been refused entry. Do you yeah, want me to you, read it to you, you or you would you like it translated? Like we had lots of evidence to work with, and whilst we didn't get a, a confession as to exactly what he was doing, we were able to establish that he's not just a visitor. And so essentially he's using the UK as a base for whatever he's doing. And there's enough reason there to cancel his visa because he stated when he applied for it, he would come for a three week holiday. And he's spent 26 out of the last 30 months here. The passenger was detained overnight and placed on a flight back to Pakistan the following day. Coming up, no hiding place for the clandestines in France. We've got one here, guys. Do you want to let the chief know, please? Illegal butchers in East London. At the present moment of time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of overstaying, OK? And the man who exceeded his tobacco allowance. If you're allowed 200 cigarettes, you bought 18,000. I'm apologising. I really apologise. More than five million passengers a year enter the UK through the port of Calais. For those trying to cross the channel illegally, they have almost 5,000 trucks a day to choose from. British immigration officers have been based here since 2004. On duty tonight are Officer Bridget McCarthy and her team. It's their job to check lorries for clandestines, as they call them. OK, we're in the Cali freight lane. It's now just gone half past four in the morning. Got a team of four of us in the lanes. One of the officers is doing the board, taking down the uh, registration of the vehicles. Someone is speaking to the driver, checking the cabs. And you've got two of us doing CO2 probes. That's putting them up inside the soft-sided vehicles and seeing if we've got anyone breathing in there. If we do get a high reading, then we'll be going in on the, the vehicle. What's happening now is we've both got a high reading on this particular one. The driver slept in Cali, he's just stated. He's got a tilt cord, but it's not secured to the seal or padlock. But he has got a padlock, so we're both going to go in and just hopefully there's no one here. Three quarters of all the trucks that come through this port are stopped and searched. In 2007, the border force stopped nearly 12,000 clandestines. No one knows how many get through undetected. Around this area of France, they get different pockets of different nationalities. Up on the Belgian borders and further into Belgium, there's a lot of Indian um, clandestines hanging around. Around this area, coming into the port and on the motorways in France, you've got a lot of Afghans, um, Iranis, Iraqis, and then illegal entrants claiming to be Eritreans. Just going to go under. You got your passport? The team can check and clear a lorry every two minutes. If their CO2 probes pick up signs of life, the search may take a little longer. Claire had a high reading at the front, so that's the reason we're going to be going in. Now we're going to need to have the side curtain off, please. The team know from experience that if clandestines have picked up a truck to hide in, 
They'll root as deep inside as they can. Yeah. We've got one here, guys. Do you want to let the chief know, please? This door was slightly open, but not. it wasn't closed properly. Uh, and we pulled it, and inside we've got a young male Eritrean that's in here. He's fine. He's a bit distressed at the moment and uh, upset, I think. He's only upset because we found him, love him, that's all. Um, but we're going to get him out now, have a talk to him. Claire, can I have the torch, babe? We've got a few more here, guys. There's more than one. There's more than one, guys. Guys, how many people speak English, please? Is anyone hurt? You're all OK? At the moment, at it's two. Oh, moment, it's at least guys. four. I've just had a shout of four. At least four. At least four inside machinery. We've got four we can see at the moment. I think one of our, our people here might be a female. Guys, where did you get in? Anybody going to speak to me this morning? No? I've not been in there myself at the moment. I went for the officers to uh, keep searching it, but it looks like it's some sort of kind of generator. I'm going to start getting them out. Okay, keep them out. Good boy. Be careful, sweetheart, be careful. For each clandestine, the truck driver and freight company can be given a fine of £2,000. You speak English? No English? OK, no problem. We won't deal with them at the moment. We'll just let them get some air if they've been inside there. You all right, sweetheart? Looks like we have got a female here. Oh, and she's a baby as well. She's a young, a young one. It is a difficult moment. I mean, my priority as a chief immigration officer is to make sure that these illegals are okay. That, that's priority number one. They've been inside a sealed container there for some time. Thankfully, they look healthy. I've checked with them now. They're all okay. They're chatting. So we're just uh, now going to deal with them and process them. I personally don't have a personal opinion while I'm at work as to their reasons for coming. You know, we've got a job to do and we do the job to the best of our ability and they're not supposed to be travelling this way undocumented to the UK and we have to do our job to stop them. We don't take any pleasure in it, it's just a job we do. We get on and do it and that's it. Where did you get in? Belgique? Belgique? No? Talking to them, they've all got different reasons for why they want to come to the UK. Some of them claim it's because in their own country they'll be in danger, either mortal danger or going to prison, something like that, so they don't want to stay in their own country. Some of them are under the impression that it'll be a much better life if they make it into the UK and there's much more opportunities for them to, to have a family, to find work, etc., for an education sometimes. So they've all got individual reasons. We've got to do this job here, not just to stop them getting to the UK, but we have to do it for their safety as well. I mean, this could have been a refrigerated vehicle that they'd got into unknowing, and the driver could have put the uh, fridge on um, at a later date, and, you know, could have been fatal. So, uh, it's a job well done. We're pleased. The four Eritreans are not carrying any identification. If they were, the French authorities could remove them from French soil. All they can do in this case is remove them from the port. Almost every minute from five in the morning to midnight, a plane load of passengers arrives at Heathrow. Officers in customs have stopped a couple who have come into the country on a holiday visa. Their bags tell a different story. In his three years as an immigration officer, Tim Weatherall has never seen a haul like it. They've had three suitcases which are down there, and the entire contents is all this, as you can see. Um, apparently we've got 18,000 cigarettes here, and then the rest here, 27.6 kilos of rolling tobacco, which is what customs have now seized, which is why it's all bagged up. Um, apparently the sort of duty value on that is just over £10,000, which is what they've obviously avoided by paying and were trying to make their profits by selling on when they got into the UK. And that's all they've had in their bag, so it's, um, it's a fairly substantial amount. You know, there's, there's no argument that this was for personal consumption, obviously, this much. It's obviously they're coming here to sell it. Officer Weatherall will lead the investigation on the motives of their visit. He and his boss, Sarah Dyson, the chief immigration officer, will decide their fate. They had three bags with them, all of which just contained contain nothing but cigarettes and tobacco. And so they have clothes? no clothes, nothing like that. How long have they taken to report to? Five days. They have got return tickets for five days. Passports. I mean, mm -hmm. is, is it likely that they've been doing this quite regularly? Well, she's, that's a brand new passport for her, and right. she's not travelled before. He came here in March, and 
he also came in 2006 where he had two sort of quite close trips to each other. So he didn't come at all in 2006? No. So it might be a good idea to take him through his travel history since 2006 to get a picture of how often he travels and where he travels because yeah. travelling is well, it's cheaper than it was, but it's still not cheap. Yeah, exactly. And I'd be interested to know how he funds these many and varied trips across the world, yeah. if not through cigarette smuggling. The man comes from Mumbai in India. Why are you coming over to the UK today? Today I came because of my, uh, my, I want to uh, tour for my wife for five days, that's why I come. So you brought your wife for a tour for five days? Yes. Why then, in your luggage, did you have so many cigarettes with you? Uh, it's my big mistake, sir. Because sir, uh, when I come from India, they're not allowed to uh, take me money. That's why I bring some of my friend told me that you go, go to take a uh, so cigarette. I think that there, there is 200 cartoon cigarettes allowed. If, if you're allowed 200 cigarettes, you bought 18,000. There's quite a difference there between 200 and 18,000, isn't there? If I tell you that the total amount of tax that you would have to pay on all those cigarettes mm. and all that tobacco is just over £10,000, you understand that? Yeah. So what you attempted to do today was to defraud the British government out of £10,000. Mm. Do you understand how serious that yeah, is? Yeah. I'm apologise sir, I'm really apologise and I'm sorry for the whole country sir, I'm really apologise. Why should I bring my wife and do like that? such a bad thing, sir? Because she has a suitcase as well, you can fit more in. Huh? So she can bring suitcases as well and you can fit more in. What? Because if you bring your wife, uh -huh. she then has a suitcase as well, so you can carry more. Because he, he also don't know and, he, and I also, also don't know, sir. And also if you bring your wife, you may think that you would be less suspicious to customs, less likely to be stopped. No, 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 it's, it's not fair, sir. No, no. Why should I bring, sir? To, to get away with it and sell, and then you make money. No, no one to make money, sir. That's I, I, I only you, want to. You told me that was the main reason you bought them was to get money. No, I want to transfer the money, convert the money, sir. So, do you honestly expect me to believe you when you tell me that you brought cigarettes into this country for currency exchange? Yeah. Officer Weatherall now has all the evidence to put before the chief immigration officer. Either they already have a buyer lined up yeah. here and they're just going to drop this whole load off with the buyer and yeah. take away what I think will be a substantial profit. Yeah. They wouldn't be doing it otherwise, it's got to be for profit. Yeah. If they didn't have the cigarettes with them, I'm in no doubt they wouldn't be stood here today. They, you know, yeah. That is the main reason they are coming Absolutely. here for. Uh, we can't do change of purpose. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think we need to try and find uh, a flight tonight for them no, there in India. Once Officer Weatherall has found flights to India for the couple, he will inform them they're being sent back home. Preventing those who try to get into Britain illegally is one thing. Tracking down, arresting and deporting those who've managed to slip through the net is quite another. That's where the enforcement team comes in. Today, they're targeting butchers in East London in an operation led by immigration officer Vicky Lacey. Intelligence suggests that Imam Quality Halal Meat has a history of employing illegal workers. We've previously been to this address, uh, it was in uh, September last year, where we arrested four subjects. There were ten people encountered, so it's quite a busy butchers. Okay, let's go. <laughs> it's predominantly um, Asian population, Pakistani, Indian, Bangladeshis. It's a very tight community. Uh, it's a very busy shopping street we're going to. We would just generate a lot of interest <laughs> from being there. We've had feedback from people that we've previously arrested saying, oh, we knew you were coming because, you know, the phones start going, the vans are on the road, is it going to be us next? So, it should be interesting. If an employer has not made the required check on his workforce, he can be fined £10,000 for each illegal worker found on his premises. Good morning, gentlemen, from the Immigration Service. Yeah, okay, you're just serving somebody, are you, sir, at the moment? Yeah. So make your way towards um, the rest of your colleagues for us, please. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hi, I'm the officer in charge today. Obviously, we visited your premises last year. That's right, yeah. We just have a check up on you. Can I uh, take your name, please? 
We speaking to the staff here, we as you know from before we've been here before, it appears the manager's got all his records into order. Everyone's been cleared. Uh, there's two left to uh, finish off. Immigration officer Jimmy Ahmed has doubts about one worker. The man claims he doesn't need a work permit because he's being adopted by a British citizen. OK, who, who, who was it that's adopting you? What's their name? Your it's adoption? Uncle. Your uncle? Yeah. OK, hold on, mate. Uh, what's his name? Yusuf. Yusuf, what Yusuf? Mr. Yusuf. Full name? Full name is Mr. Yusuf. Mr. Yusuf? Yeah. There needs to be, obviously he's got more than just Mr. Yusuf. What's his full name? Because at the moment we can't find you on our systems. Do you have his document? Uh, Basically, he's saying he's got indefinite leave to remain, and we can't find him. Okay. Um, so if you have anything that can speed up the process, any documentation that he's given to you, either a passport or, or a letter from the Home Office, that would be brilliant. Right, your, your adoption um, application, was it refused? No, it wasn't. So what, what, what was it? Because there's no way that your application is still running from 1996. That's impossible. Okay, mate, no problem. All right, cheers. So at the moment, you don't have any right to be in the UK. Okay? Are you aware of that fact? Right, work with me, yeah? You came here in 95, you made an application in 96 for adoption. Yeah? That was refused. Okay? Then you applied again, and that was refused as well. Yeah. Yes. So at the moment, you don't have any stay. So at the present moment time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of overstaying, okay? Enforcement officers have the power of arrest, and this illegal worker now faces deportation. But the team is satisfied the employer has done all he can to check the legal status of his workers. From being here before, he didn't have any records. We arrested four of his staff. He's now in compliance with the new legislation. The whole point of what we do isn't really to go well, is to find offenders, but also to make sure that people are in compliance with the new illegal working legislation. So, yeah, he's doing well. Coming up, Hello, a surprising consignment in Calais. Basically, you can't see the back of the lorry because there's just so many of them in there, just sat on top of a load of yogurts. Hitting employers of illegal workers where it hurts. Things aren't looking good for you at the moment. I'm going to serve you a fine okay. of £50,000. And the tobacco smuggler gets desperate. Okay, I'm not going to allow you to come into the country. Oh, if you like, do that, I'll kill myself here, sir. At Heathrow's Terminal 3, the couple carrying 18,000 cigarettes and 27 kilos of tobacco are waiting to hear their fate. Officer Weatherall must tell them they will be put on a plane back to India tonight. I'm not expecting him to take it particularly badly, to be honest. It may well turn out that he's upset, but at the same time, you can't really argue with you know, the facts. They've tried to evade over £10,000 worth of duty in the UK. We didn't give them a visa to come here and sell cigarettes, and that's what they're coming here to do. Obviously, you were issued with visitors' visas to come here on holiday. The fact that you have all the cigarettes and tobacco with you and that you've stated you're intending to sell that, um, on that basis, we're going to refuse you leave to enter the UK today. We're not going to allow you to come into the country. Legally, we have to send you back on the first available flight, and that's what we're going to do today. There is a flight. Sorry, sorry, if, if I go there back, they will kill, kill me with the Indian government. They will kill both of us. They will give, uh, give, send me behind the bar. There is too much uh, tension in India. If you to, to, uh, if you not entry for two or three days here, and you will send me, I, I, do, I will don't know. They will, they will kill, you, kill us. I explained to you when I was interviewing you that you needed to be fully forthcoming and honest with me. That you needed to tell me the truth. You haven't mentioned anything about that. No, but okay. sir, if, if you deport like this, me, they will kill me. But they will, uh, I, 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 I will kill you. No. Indian government, sir. Too Just much, because of the cigarettes? Ah, too think. much harassment in India, sir. Please. In my, my wife, they, they don't believe me. They, okay. You made that decision to bring those cigarettes into into the, this country, yeah? No, but right now... You, you made that decision, and that was your decision, okay? And as such, you have been refused leave to enter this country and are being returned to India. No, sir. But, but, there is nothing but, that can be done. Those are the rules. If you like to do this, I'll kill myself here, yeah, sir. I, I don't I go, go there. There's too much trouble over there. You need to wait here. I'll come back and speak to you in a minute, okay? When I was talking to him, he said, shall I just kill myself now then? And I'm not sure how flippant the remark was. I'm not sure how serious he was. But obviously, if, if, you know, if someone in immigration detention is 
making threats like that. We can't just ignore it, obviously. Sarah's just going to go and have a, a chat with the passenger now and sort of explain things to him to see whether or not that calms him down. Listen, OK. As far as the law is concerned, there is no flexibility, OK? Your visas are cancelled and you have to go back to India. If they are still saying that they feel under threat from the Indian authorities, then they need to explain that to us in a bit more detail. I will kill myself, but by no, don't, don't go more. Please. Right, listen, listen. okay. Yeah, is, is it worth saying things please, like that? Please. Okay, let's just calm down, listen. Okay. And do is it worth it? Please. See, I am not a first time in London. I am coming yeah. from eight years to oh, a right. steam country. I hear and you. I, have a I hear you. Listen. And it's, before, I, eight, listen, my listen. eight years ago, I didn't do anything wrong in England. But it's my, it's my minor mistakes. It's not my. Yes, it's a mistake. I don't bring I any drugs, you. and I don't bring any evolution arms. Um, okay, I hear you. So you are telling me like that? All right. You know. So are you telling? Okay. You're getting so upset that I'm thinking that you are much more worried about going back to India because you believe something will happen to you. The man's claims take the investigation to a new level. Chief Immigration Officer Dyson and Officer Wetherill must make sure the couple understand their options. The claims that you've made are obviously very serious. I need a decision. These are the options that you have. If you think in your heart of hearts that you will be killed when you return to India, then you have no choice but to claim asylum in the UK. If you are not genuinely in fear of your life, you need to, you need to return home to India. And that is, you know, that is a decision that you have to make, OK? Are we in agreement that you're ask, actually asking for asylum here? Is that what you're asking for, sir? Say yes or yeah, no, there's yes, no yes. problem. Yes. So you want political asylum here, is yes. that correct? Give me passport. I will go and go on, on counter and I will arrange my uh, for ticket. Uh, and then I will take my passport and I will go. The man's changing demand suggests to the officers that his fear of returning to India is not genuine. I've given you options. We've discussed things at great length. No. Make your decision and we will process that decision. When you will give me Make your decision now, no, OK? Just a, please. First option is you go back to India tonight and I get the officer to speak to the airline and ask them, ask them, ask the captain if he will give you your passports back, OK, so that you can quietly present them yourself. The next option is, you tell me that you're in fear of your life and you want asylum. We will listen to your claim for asylum. It will be processed properly and heard fairly, but you'll be detained until the outcome. The third option is, you tell me that you don't want asylum, okay, but you won't go tonight, quietly. Then I will have no option okay, to arrange escorts for you. Two people who will go with both of you, maybe even four people, who will go with both of you and you'll be in handcuffs and you will go back tomorrow. Have you gone? Yes. They want to go. The passengers have said that they will go on the flight as long as they can be reunited with their passports to go home. Sarah's just checking that the airline are OK to give them their passports so they can arrive in India as normal arriving passengers. They've been refused entry because their visas are not valid for the purpose for which entry was sought, i.e. coming to sell goods. Um, and I just want to satisfy myself that they'll be treated OK when they get to India. They'll not be convicted of anything. Yeah, it's just fine. that their visas are not valid for this purpose. No OK, so I, don't, I would like them to be treated OK. Yeah. It's been eight hours since the tobacco smugglers were caught by customs. Their deal with immigration means the only thing the Indian authorities will know is that they were refused entry to Britain because they changed the purpose of their visit. In Calais, the search team is coming to the end of their night shift. Rush hour has started. Truck drivers head for the morning ferries after a few hours rest. Uh, it sounds like our colleagues have got some, uh, uh, another, another find of people in the, in the shed next door. It's a hard-sided vehicle as well. Hello, guys. It's a huge find. And the clandestines haven't even bothered to try and conceal themselves. 16, Basically, you can't see the back of the lorry because there's just so many of them in there just sat on top of a load of yoghurts. Wait, so where, Belgium? Where have you come from? Any, any uh, miners in there, Dave? Any female miners? No, no. 
No ladies, no? No ladies? Where from? Where are you from? Afghanistan. Afghanistan, yeah? Afghanistan. Yeah. Right, guys, can we have them out one at a time? Come on, gentlemen. The team regularly stops Afghanis from entering Britain illegally. Of all the clandestines called at Calais, more are from Afghanistan than any other country. Yeah, they're very pleasant guys. They don't seem uh, deterred by, you know, I think they'll be glad that they're being found. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, again, the, you know, the main concern is with the uh, people you find in the back of these uh, sealed units. First priority is, are they okay? And as you can see, they're smiling, they're okay. So there's no problems there. What's happening now is the guys are going in to make sure that it is all clear before they uh, declare the vehicle clear. We've got a load of, of chilled goods for supermarkets that have obviously been damaged a little, but not, not major. Yeah, it's just chocolate desserts, tiramisu's, panna cottas, profit rolls. As you know, this is a refrigerated vehicle. It's running at, at plus two, I believe, between plus two and plus five. It is cold. They're well wrapped up. Oh, I've just put my hands in there, so it is, it's pretty cold. Evidence that they've been in there a little while. It's um, not not very hygienic, obviously, but they've uh, been quite careful in uh, filling a bottle like that. Border control keeps a record of every clandestine found. Each should be photographed and fingerprinted before being handed over to the French authorities. We've just got nowhere else to put them at the moment. Obviously, it's such a big, big number. We, we need to process them now. Now we've entered that uh, vehicle with the 16 um, clandestines, all of Afghani uh, origin, all male and all in fairly good spirits. I remember one at the beginning of this year that had uh, about three or four more and that was in the back of the big drums from cement mixers that we found down on the berths. But other than that, I can't think of anything that's been more than this, other than that one this year. On average, this is a big find. We've handed them over now to uh, ECS, who are our escort team. They're going to take them into the detention room one at a time. G4S will search them, put them in detention. That's going to be a long process, because as we know, there's 16 of them, so it could take an hour and a half, maybe. don't know how long. All 16 Afghanis, none of them carrying ID, are escorted out of the port, free to join the clandestine community in Calais, and free to try another day to cross the channel illegally. In East London, the enforcement team is gearing up for another surprise visit. Once again, they're after butchers and illegal workers. Same method, arrest two, go back to the rear, and if you can do your rear cover again. Any questions? Let's rock and roll. We've not um, visited this place before. It's quite a big butchers like the last one. It'll be the same method as before, round up the staff, have a chat, see if the management have got their records in order. Let's go, everyone. Guys, can you come down here, please? Don't you come? A sweep through the whole shop turns up ten butchers for the team to check out. Sir, can you stand over here for me? Right, we're checking everyone. I've spoken to the manager. He doesn't have any photocopies of documents, home office papers. Only pays you earn, which is no good to us. So uh, we're going to have to do the whole shebang. Your visa, how long was it for? Six months. Six months? Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. When did you get the visa? Five years before. Five years ago. So you've overstayed four and a half years? Yeah? Right, Mohammed. Right, did you get the visa yourself? No, one agent. You come by an agent? Uh, he's admitted entering the UK five years ago using somebody else's passport with his photograph on it, in it. Um, he's since not approached the Home Office uh, to sort his stay out. So uh, I'm going to now interview him with the assistance of my colleague who speaks the language and uh, we'll take you from there. I don't believe what you've told me, OK? The Home Office checks have come back and there's no trace of you being issued a visa, OK? Do you understand that you've entered the UK illegally? What you've told me from this uh, interview, Stop. okay, I'm going to have to arrest you for entering the UK illegally. Sorry. 
we have arrested five people so far. As far as I'm aware, they've all been arrested for overstaying their visas. Uh, they've all come on holiday visas. Nine times out of ten, they turn up at the airport, they say they're here for a holiday, they produce a return ticket, they get a job and they don't go home. That's why they've been arrested today. Those of them that have passports, we will aim to put them into a detention centre and remove back to Pakistan in the next 72 hours, hopefully. Now the team's attention turns to the manager. Have you made any application on his behalf to stay in the UK? Uh, not recently. And you told him you would do, that's why he's overstayed. You said you were going to help him, but you haven't. Are you, are you, running, uh, are you running some kind of immigration advisory thing? Well, you have this gentleman has given you his passport. You said you'd make an application. He's just told us the boss of the shop told him not to go back to the UK, back to Pakistan, um, and that he's going to sort his work permit out. When we just spoken to the boss, he said he's got his passport, but he hasn't done anything about it. So the poor guy here has been given the wrong advice, and that's why he's been arrested now for overstay. Mr. Ahmed, can you please terminate that call, please? Right. Okay. I need the documents for the people that you're, yeah. the documents of the people downstairs. Okay, yeah. Things aren't looking good for you at the mm -hmm. moment, okay? okay. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna serve you a fine okay. of 50,000 mm pounds. -hmm. Now, if you have that kind of money to throw away, then, you know, you've got, that. basically, you're gonna have to prove that you've done all the relevant immigration checks okay. to employ these people legally. Okay. And from what I've seen at the moment, you don't have that. Mm -hmm. All right, so okay. you're gonna have to contact your solicitor. Yes, sir. Uh, bringing two prisoners out. With the arrest of a sixth illegal worker, the manager could have another £10,000 added to his fine. Coming up, the man who claims he's got a personal message for the Queen. Never from Buckingham Palace before. And the enforcement team hunting for a passport find more than they bargained for. Oh my God! Oh my God. The brooches everywhere. Immigration officer Kay Lomas believes she's seen every trick in the book. But now she's faced with a visitor from Turkey who says he's got an official but personal message for the Queen. This gentleman has turned up from Istanbul. He claims that he's coming to visit the royal family to deliver an invitation to the opening of a yacht club. We don't have a problem with that as such, so long as, um, one, he's ex expected, and two, that it's obviously a genuine occasion. I wouldn't expect to be invited to something with a letter like this. Its language is colourful, it's um, not even square on the paper. And given the nature of what he says he's coming to do, contact a member of the royal family, there are obviously security issues and personal safety issues, so we do have to, to go into this a little more carefully. The person you need to talk to is this, the Christopher Sandemus, because he's the only contact that I have yeah. with the palace. But is this the letter for the Queen? That's the letter that's going the, to the, the Queen. The official copy? No, no, the, it's sealed. This is why we're hand-delivering it, because it was hand-sealed with a wax thing. So that's why we're hand-delivering it, because it just wouldn't go in the mail. Seems really genuine, doesn't he? I think. I'm a bit more convinced now that when I saw that one, and it was just on the back of that rough paper, I thought, you wouldn't hand that to Her Majesty. But now I've seen that sealed letter, I think, ooh. I don't think she's going to go to that opening there. I don't think she'll be. She'll be too busy. It's only next month. Never phoned Buckingham Palace before. Yeah. I've got a valid reason to call the royal household. Hello, sir. I'm calling from immigration at Heathrow Terminal 3. Hi, sir. Um, are you expecting anyone today to be coming to the palace? He really is doing that. He really is doing that, yeah? <laughs> no, well, we were just a bit shocked because um, when the gentleman came to the desk and said that he was coming to deliver something to the Queen, obviously we, we have had some cases in the past where it's not been the case and so we just wanted to make sure that that was true. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thanks, bye. They're expecting it. We don't perhaps have a guy that has a problem with the royal family 
but nor do we have anybody who's really expected yet other than to, li to deliver something to the side door. Mm -hmm. So is this kind of the stock answer they give, if you want to deliver something this is how you would deliver it to the police yeah. at the side door. From that then, um, it's all down to what we think of him I know. and how he comes across. And you say he comes across as fairly plausible and genuine. Yeah, I would like to speak to him But again. I think we do need to speak to him. The enforcement team has raided two butchers and made seven arrests. But five of the detainees don't have passports, which the team needs to remove them from the country. They have no choice but to grant them temporary release. Right. Also be aware, you're not allowed to work. No, long, no more working. You understand? Right? You're not allowed to work. We've got no detention space at all, which is a normal case. So uh, the uh, decision was made to release him, to sign on at our office on a weekly basis until his application is decided. Out of the seven that are arrested today, five have been given temporary release to Beckett House, which is an equivalent of kind of like a police bail. Another two are being detained to be removed back to Pakistan, and we're going on to do a house search for one of them now. This worker has told the officers he does have a passport and is at home. Anyone in? Is this one yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your passport's in there. He hasn't told them his home is crawling Have you got the with key? cockroaches. It's uh, about Oh my god. Oh, it's, it's walking in the whole place. Bingo. I can't, I can't have... No, the whole floor was moving. No. Oh, the roaches everywhere. In fact, I'm going to take my... <laughs> Stars is in my boots. I've got his passport. There he is. The guy that was arrested. And his... Holiday or visit visa, which expired. 28th of February 2007. It's time for him to go home now. The two detained illegal workers are later given temporary release until their removal from Britain can be confirmed. Four of the five released on the street did not comply with reporting conditions. They have been circulated as absconders on the police national computer. The owner of the butchers was fined £25,000. Even though Buckingham Palace has confirmed they are expecting a visitor from Turkey to deliver a letter for the Queen, Officer Lomas must make sure he is genuine. So why have you decided to come over to bring the letter rather than just post it? Because it, it will make a better impression, you know. It, it makes a better impression if someone gets on an airplane flies four hours, brings an uh, envelope that's been sealed with wax, which mm -hmm. is an ancient kind of tradition, that even if the queen says, you know, I can't make it, you know, she might send somebody else. She might say, you know, that's, you know, pretty interesting that someone did that. Mm -hmm. So it's to make an impression. Can I just borrow this document? Yes. I shall return it shortly. I'm doing this to make things happen a bit quicker. Come on, wait outside. Oh, okay. I'm happy that he's coming to do what he says he's coming to do. The people he's coming to see are happy for him to come and do it. Um, he's likely to return when he says he's going to return. And as, an, uh, you know, as a chief immigration officer, that's all I'm interested in. He's happy, he understands why we stopped him, and he's on his way. There we go, sir. Good Yay. luck with your letter. Thank you very much. Thanks for your Take work. care. <laughs> Bye, sir. Take care. They're protecting Her Majesty's borders and someone who's going to get close to the royal family, they want to know more about that person. That, that makes sense to me. But I wish it took a shorter time. Huh?